Hey, good morning, you guys. It is time for your health check. It is Pride Month, also Men's Health Month. And something we don't often talk about is eating disorders among men. So according to the National Eating Disorders Association, 10 million men struggle with eating disorders at some point in their lives. 42% of men with eating disorders actually identify as gay. Statistics indicate elevated rates of binge eating and purging or laxative abuse in people who identify as gay, lesbian, or bisexual compared to their heterosexual peers. The pandemic didn't help, right? The Eating Recovery Center, which has offices around the country, says they've seen a 90% jump in new patient calls from the beginning of this year compared to the same time in early 2020. So if you or someone you know is struggling with any form of disordered eating, please seek help. You can schedule a free assessment with a clinician by calling the Eating Recovery Center. That number is on your screen there, 866-438-8618. I've gotten a lot of messages from y'all over the last couple of weeks saying, Sonia, I haven't really exercised in a while, but now I'm vaccinated. I'm ready to work out again. Where do I start? Well, I can tell you this. When it comes to movement, you want to do something that you really enjoy. So that could be walking, dancing, yoga, Pilates, boxing. I think it's always really important to kind of take baby steps and to ease into it. Uh, you don't need to go into the gym and spend an hour and a half in there doing both cardio and weights right away. I think small incremental steps and changes are the most beneficial. They're the least intimidating and they're the most sustainable. Sustainable, that word is key. Getting enough water and proper sleep, by the way, every day are huge factors in your overall physical and mental well being, too. Hey, you can always join the Fitter Together Facebook group for a little motivation, accountability, and positive support. A newly approved drug is being called a game changer in the growing national obesity crisis. The FDA has approved this drug for the treatment of chronic obesity. So in the clinical trials, patients on average reported a 15% weight loss and at least one third reported losing 20%. So this is similar to what you lose with lap band bariatric surgery. The medication can help balance out hormones apparently like insulin, which curb appetite and allow people to shed pounds by eating less. Now, while side effects appear to be mild, some experts are concerned about its safety long term. So coming up on Good Morning America, Dr. Jennifer Ashton is going to take a closer look at all of this. She'll have more for you then.